Okay, it's uh, been several days, only because of the holidays, not because I was waiting on shipping. I actually uh, sent my gimbal ring out to JR Marine and uh, Ron at JR Marine sent this guy back. So this is a rebuilt, um, I exchanged my worn out one for a rebuilt one. And it was 400 and some dollars, 420 or something like that for that. And then I got a bunch of other gaskets and stuff, so we'll uh, take a look and see what we got in here. Okay, first thing we have is this is the transom seal, the foam, foam piece that goes behind the transom. This is the water hose um, that goes from the transom down to the, uh, to the out drive. This is the new gimbal bearing. This is one of the big pieces here. This is a new uh, swivel pin. So mine had a bunch of markings actually in this round part right here where a bunch of grooves had been, not, not a bunch, but there were grooves worn into it. So it rides on it rides on this surface and this surface. So those both have to be true. And then obviously the square part has to be still square. This is a new uh, shift cable and sheath. This is a new gasket for the um, bell housing where the outdrive mates up. Okay, so this is the uh, kind of the crown jewel. Like I said, about 400 and some dollars. And you can see how that shape has been welded and remachined so that it's true now. Then the side um, pieces have been redone or at least checked. I don't know if this one specifically was redone because again this is the core. And then the bottom and then also the, the sliders, the shoe or whatever on the inside there. Those look really good too. So and then of course it was all repainted. So that's uh, that's kind of a nice unit. You know 400 bucks or 400 and whatever it was is better than I was seeing them like six to eight hundred. This is I believe I think this is the gimbal uh, the drive shaft bellows. Here's a set of limit switches, or the, the senders. This is the exhaust bellows and clamps. This is the shift boot, shift cable boot. This is some bellows adhesive, so this is what you use to actually glue the bellows basically and seal, make a good seal. And then the oil hose. And then a pen, but it's broken. <laughs> so it's at the bottom of the box. So, anyway, there's the kind of the parts haul, I guess. Um, they had to have helped somebody there if you were looking for a part or something. And like I said, it was easier for me to just call Ron up and say, hey, "This is what I need." And so we just went through. This is this is the first first swing. I'm sure there's something that I forgot or we forgot, basically. But uh, that's a lot of work to get all that put together. Real quick, not to not to plug plug them. I'm absolutely in no way sponsored by these guys whatsoever, because this whole pile of parts cost me like twelve hundred some damn dollars, which that's just kind of the way it is. But more as an option for viewers, this is this is what we're talking about. So if one of those end pins, you can see how it's kind of wallowed out on the one side. They go in here, they weld it, and then they remachine it. Same thing for the top. This is where mine was screwed up. The top. It'd be all, you know, walled out and screwed up. I think I included that in the video. And then here it is remachined and redone. So um, it's a way, I think they do more like Bravo stuff and less alpha stuff. But in this case, mine was uh, pretty, um, I mean, it was damaged for sure, but um, not all the holes were damaged. So it actually was not too bad to get fixed up. Okay, so here's my uh, gimbal housing. Um, I put in the parts washer and kind of wash it up. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, obviously the gimbal bearing is out, but then uh, we still have this, there's a seal there and also a, uh, a little wear bushing right there. So that wear bushing um, was wore out and that goes with, that goes to right here, anyway. And then also way deep in there, way like in the back where my finger's touching there, it would be in the top of it, 
is where this section of the pin rides. And so both of those need to be um, pulled out and replaced with a new one. So I'm going to take a bunch of like Dremel-like tools. Um, might actually go get my Dremel, but anyway, and kind of cut a slit like that in the side of it so I can kind of punch it out with a screwdriver or something. And if I nick the the substrate behind there, it's not the end of the world because, um, you know, the, the bushing does all the, the um, protection of that area anyway. split in it so then I just cut through right there so you can just barely hang a, a fingernail on that thing so looks great okay so if you look way down in there you can see that uh, bushing that's coming out so anyway I basically just took that Dremel tool and kind of sawed through the sides of it just like I did on the other one and then I took some screwdrivers from this hole down in there and pounded them pounded them down in there kind of like like this here so that now you can see those bearing shells are, are just chilling down I just gotta peel it out of there so not shells but the, the bushing is down in there so anyway we'll uh, finish extracting that but that's how you do the how you get this all cleaned up here all right there it is out and all mangled <laughs> so it isn't a uh, very surgical job, but uh, got it done. So anyway, without uh, without too much damage to the uh, to the housing. Anyway, I'll clean this all up and get ready to push the new ones in. I got inside there on the bottom, the way down hole there, and got some scotch bright in there and was trying to clean up. There was one little gouge that I kind of smoothed out. Then. Uh, not that that matters, because again, I'm putting these bushings in there. So this is the smaller bushing. This is the one that goes way, way down in there. And this is the larger one that goes right here. So uh, anyway, you can see they're pretty typical stuff. So I'm going to see if I can figure something out. I'll put the small one in first, then the larger one, and see if I can uh, figure out something to drive it in. I might actually use the pin the new pin but uh, I don't know if that's barbaric or not but we'll uh, we'll see I'm still deciding on that hopefully I can find something else here in the shop that works okay so I think I'm gonna go the uh, absolute brute way which is take this bushing slide it on top here and then I'm gonna take a little grease go around the outside of it so hopefully it slides down in there decent Kind of the nice thing about this way is the pin kind of kind of tells you if you're lined up or not. So again, I'm going to flip this over, and drop it down in there. So I'm going to have to put some grease on the inside too, so that it sticks on there. I got some on the pin, so again, it's stuck on there now. Gonna kind of wobble it to find home a little bit. Seems about right. A little dead blow here. Okay, we're started, but I still need to go a little more. Okay, we're definitely started now. Now I'd like to put something down in there to drive it home, but this will work. But I'm kind of running out of stroke here. We've got about another 3 16 to go. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And now I'll use the first the first uh, 
bushing kind of as a guide for this one now too so it should kind of work out okay so again a little bit of grease on the outside a little bit on the inside they're both beveled for starting Okay, so I bottomed out on the deal. So now I need to just push that in a little more. Probably could just whack it right here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna push this in a little more. I have my, uh, probably a, about a quarter inch to go in further. But I have uh, this, uh, what is this? So three quarter inch rigid coupling, I think. Anyway. I'm gonna try and center that up and smash it down in there. Further. Okay, so I pushed this um, bushing down in there enough, far enough with this um, coupling right here. And so now the last little piece is this seal. There's the part number. And there's the seal. So it has like a what would be normally the inside and this would be the outside so this is the way it goes like here and I have a socket that seems to be about the right size I'm going to square it up and set it home here okay so we got this uh, seal pressed in everything looks good there so now we're down to the gimbal bearing area and my understanding is this is the this is the kit that I have right here that's the number and basically um, first thing is this is a pre lubed permanently lubed bearing okay and it is not not symmetrical you'll notice the one side hanging out this side but it's not on this side so the direction is important and the white dot goes to the outdrive side. So um, it would go in like that. Then the other thing um, you'll notice on when this was originally came out, it was required, that it, it was a little bit different bearing. Lube comes in through this tube right here that you can grease, you can grease, there's a little uh, fitting, grease fitting here that was sitting right here and you actually pull that out and replace it with a plug. And the reason for that is, now with this permanently lubed bearing going in, it will not need greasing, and so then therefore no one will try and force grease into it. So anyway, um, I'm gonna press this in. Then it came with the, the actual, uh, the actual plug was this, this type of a, like a little set screw, you know, see A and B there, it's like a little set screw but it had a tamper re resistant tip. So I didn't, didn't have that tool. So actually my dad was happened to be running into town. So I said, grab me one. So he took the plug, but anyway, I'll do that at some point, but um, I'll also get this hopefully pressed in there um, and sitting where it needs to be. So um, we're gonna see if we can get that knocked out. And then one other thing too is behind here, originally there was a seal that was pressed in there and you don't need the seal anymore because that basically is to keep the grease from pooping out into the back of the boat. So um, obviously if you don't grease anymore then you don't need the seal because water should never get in to this area. The inside would be obviously in the boat, shouldn't be water. And then also this will all be sealed off um, with the gimbal, um, the drive shaft bellows basically. So uh, the main bellows. So we're gonna, um, that was just one note that I, I kind of forgot there. Okay, so I got the uh, housing uh, sitting inside the um, press here. And so the operation that I have set up, of course that's in there straight. Then I have a PVC fitting. This is a, what, three incher? Two and a half inch PVC fitting. Electricians know what I'm talking about. And uh, then just the plate. And then I'm gonna push, push down with the press, and press that in. And uh, notice again, I have my dot facing out, and then I'm pressing on the outer ring, not not the inside. I don't want to stress the bearing. It didn't matter when I was coming out, but for this instance, I want to kind of be gentle to it. So uh, yeah, that should go in pretty decent, hopefully, and 
um, I'm going to go until basically it stops. Okay, so uh, that's in there. It spins nice and easy. I think we're good. So that actually pressed down really nice and then it just kind of stopped. So it seems like it's in there nice and straight and even. Okay, so we're kind of <clears throat> moving on to dressing the rest of the uh, uh, gimbal housing. These are the pieces that came from the uh, oil reservoir that is where you fill top top off, I'll say, the drive oil for the outdrive. So anyway, this is the outer fitting and actually goes through that hole right there. So this, there's this O-ring here, first of all, and the O-ring actually looks pretty good. It's pretty plush yet, it seems good. Then the washer and the nut go on the inside and then this fitting goes on the inside of that. So anyway, and then and then this would have been the piece of hose that I cut originally. I just, I just knifed it off because I knew I wasn't gonna reuse it. Here's a nice piece of fresh hose. That was in the kit that I ordered, for, or the pieces that I ordered from JR Marine. And then, of course, this zip tie is screwed up. So I think I think there's new ones of those in there too. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get this all kind of reset up. And if I remember right, that hose kicks off, comes down here. So that's that's the way I'm going to kind of point this, kind of like like that. And and you'll notice that this this nut is basically captive by the casting there. So it can only turn so far. So um, we'll get after it. The uh, oil reservoir line is in here and just kind of waiting for the, the rest of it. So um, I have my water intake line and I kind of put this together about so. Those should be about 90 degrees out from each other and uh, same about there. So what you do is you take and you shove this through here and that hose kind of just chills right up back up in there. Might have to might have to move this hose clamp a little bit because I want to be out of the way of where the bellows will seal here. I think that I think that'll work. I still think there's enough room there. So anyway, you get that shoved through, then this is just stabbed coming out away from the housing. Then come around back. Then you take I have this rubber piece, this little cone-shaped deal that goes down and it fits in in this gap right here and then you put the cap on top. So anyway, the uh, part number for the hose is right here. So I'm gonna uh, knock that out real quick. Okay, so we're kinda at the moment of truth here. I think we have everything reasonably prepped to start putting the uh, gimbal ring in. So here's my new swivel pin, um, brand new, and then my remachined gimbal ring, and then also here's the steering arm. So I'll put the gimbal ring into the gimbal housing, then put the pin in from below, then this little spacer goes in there, then the arm, then the washer, then the nut. So um, and those all, all those pieces go in on the top, in the kind of the head up there. So uh, we'll get to it here. Got the gimbal ring at least in here and spins really nice and nice and square. So um, basically it was kind of a screw around deal to try and get those all lined up. So 
it finally did. So there's the nut tightened down. I still have to put this cross bolt in. But before you do that, how you know where to set this bolt in here, that or that nut in there, is off of this gap right here, is my understanding. So anyway, I have feeler gauge set here, one at 10 thousandths and one at two and a half. And you should be able to not get the 10 in there, but do get the two and a half in there. So that's what I have going on here. I, somewhere between 10 and two and a half thousandths, it's actually two thousandths clearance. So that's, that's about where I want it to be. So um, I can leave the, the nut behind here that can stay where it's at. And now um, I'll put the, obviously this pin is in here. Then there's a washer. You can see it right there, right on the face there. That little washer right there is in there. And that takes up part of that gap. And then now using this, whoops, using this screw drive location here, I can get this aligned so that the cotter pin can go in that hole right there. So you just have to turn the ring out of the way to get that started. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get that sorted and then I'm going to put the steering arm cross bolt in too. Okay, so now we're at the point where I'm going to put these uh, two bolts in there on each side. So um, this is the part number. I think that must be like a JR part number. I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, here are the bolts, a washer for each end, and then a little bit of grease to make sure the, the torque setting is true. So uh, I'm going to get those uh, started and, and torqued up. Okay, well I got these two torqued down to 50 and the one on the back there to 60. <laughs> That's kind of a sucker when this thing's moving around. You gotta get a wrench on the back side here, but we got it. So anyway, I'm kind of at a, a point where I wanna stop now and uh, just for today anyway and clean up a little bit. So um, please comment or like or subscribe or whatever. Um, this is uh, this took me about uh, five hours today um, It's one of my Christmas days off so not looking to hate it here, but um, If you were a pro I'm sure you could get it done quite a bit quicker, but uh, for me being a straight noob This uh, this is what you get so anyway um, more to come on this uh, transom housing and then uh, uh, excuse me gimbal housing and we'll uh, get this boat back on the water. Thanks for watching